So I said in the last episode, if we won at least four of our games, that I would be a happy, happy manager. And I am sitting here as a happy manager. We've won four, drawn one. We've made a few transfers. We're playing the Scottish Cup fourth round. Then we play against... It's a, it's a packed episode. Let's get right into it. Yes, hello and welcome in to Living in Sports here for the Kelly Boys on Football Manager 21. If you're new around here, hit that subscribe button for more daily football manager content. And if you missed the last episode, go and have a watch of it. That was quite a good one. Last time out, we played against Falkirk and HJK, where we won 4 0 and 5 0. And since then, we have played five games. As I mentioned in the intro, we've won four of them. We played Rangers, we won 1 0 with a Jubo Jovic goal. To be honest, we kind of smash and grab that one. Rangers are a bit better than us. In that game, uh, we then played Hibs where we won 2 1. Lambert and Cronetta getting goals after a, a, a Brennan Johnson penalty drew Hibs level 71 minutes into the game. We then played Dun United where Booker scored a penalty. We won 1 0. Again, didn't play that well, but we won the game. We beat Motherwell 1 0 thanks to a Booker goal. Again, didn't play that well, but won the game. So when I've said I'm happy, I'm happy with the results, not necessarily with the performances. And then we just finished off the year on Boxing Day with a draw. Away, sorry, at home to St Mirren. Uh, Jesus De La Rosa getting the goal after Cameron Rose put St Mirren ahead. To be honest, that was a game we did dominate, yet somehow we didn't win. You can see from the games, though, we won 4 now and 5 now in the last episode. Since then, it's mainly been our defensive performances that have won us the games. You see, 1 0, 2 1, 1 0, 1 0, and a 1 0. Not scoring a lot of goals since that HJK game, but defensively, very sound indeed. So that leaves the Scottish Premiership looking like this. We're right at the top of Look at that. 50 points for us. Celtic in second on 46. But Rangers do have a chance to go level with us if they win their two games in hand. One of those against Dundee United, which could be tough. But one is against Hamilton, which looks like a game that they should win. So Rangers could end up being joint on points with us. Level on points when they've played all their games. But we'll just pretend that they are six points behind and we are leading the way all by ourselves just now with no one else anywhere near us. That sounds good to me. Thank you. And obviously, as you can see, we're in January, which means the transfer window has opened, and it means we've had a couple of ins and a couple of outs. Starting with the outs, Thierry Yada fell, uh, the left back. We signed for free from Brazil ooh, a couple of seasons ago now. He ended up playing one game for us, uh, one league game, one cup game, uh, as he came in as a backup left back after Califiori played so well. And we've sold him to Brentford for £5 million, which I'm not going to complain about. I uh, say he was a backup two and a half star player, wasn't really going to develop that much. And we already had another left back coming in that had been scheduled for a, from a few years ago, but he wasn't old enough to come over. We'll get to him in a minute. Uh, so we didn't really need Yadar Fell there as a backup left back. So we sold him and £5 million for a backup player when we signed him for nothing is a, a fairly decent piece of business, I would say. And our other out during this transfer window is Alan Graham. I know. We signed him as a record transfer all those years ago. We paid 25 million so far. He can go up to 30 million. He's played with us for all those years, scoring hardly any goals any of those years. And he's been signed by Beijing in China for 35 million pounds, going up to 40, depending on add ons. I never thought we would make a profit on Alan Graham, especially with how he was playing for us. But the fact that Beijing have come in and offered him. £80,000 a week, which was about 10 times as much as we were giving them, something like that, uh, and he gave us £40 million for him, I will happily take, especially for a backup striker for us now. We could get rid of him, especially... His stats are so good, especially his finishing 17, his anticipation, his composure. He just was, He just never did it for us, unfortunately. Saying that, if you look at stats on the left-hand side, 25 goals and 89 is not too bad, but it's certainly not prolific as a striker. So hopefully he goes and does it with Beijing for, for his sake anyway and for his potential Scotland career. But yeah, making £40 million on a backup striker who's not playing that well, I will take that. And we've had three players come in. The first one here is Tomas Notch, the player I was referring to when I was saying we were happy to let Yadar Fell leave. Uh, Tomas here uh, is going to be a backup right back and centre back for us. Not that great sense that centre back, so, so mainly a right back. Some nice physical stats there. We've signed him for £725,000 uh, from Brazil. Uh, Independiente, I think that team is. Independiente. Uh, but he's got some very nice physical stats there. His mark is 11, pass is 11. 
uh, tackling is only nine, so that could do with perhaps improving slightly, or quite a lot. Uh, he's heading only ten, so perhaps not defensively great, but a very good physical specimen. We'll see if we can develop some of his mental and technical skills. Not a first choice. Happily, there's second or third choice at right back. The second player we have brought in is George Pena. Uh, we already have a centre-back called Pena from Mexico, but this is a, a Pena from Romania. He sees a centre midfielder. And look at some of those statistics. 17 balance there is a pick of the physicals, but you know most of them are kind of 13, 14 area. His mentals, 17 bravery, 17 decisions, 16 determination, 16 flair, the teamwork, 18, work rate, 16, vision. Ah, look at that. That's a lot of good stats there. And even in his technicals, first touch, 16, heading, 16, technique, 16. He's got nice defensive stats like tackling a 13 and marking of 14. His passing is 15. Dribbling 50. He's a very, very good player. He's 19 years old. We signed him from Cluj for four and a half million pounds. I think that's going to be a good signing. We've given him number 10. Likely going to be one of the players who starts for us in the middle. Uh, possibly alongside Velasquez. Or if Velasquez eventually leaves with that very small uh, release clause he has in his contract. To kind of just point out, he hasn't left yet. No one's offered that amount of money, which someone really should have. So we still have Velasquez. We've still got well, about two and a half weeks of this window to go. So that might not be the case by the time we get to the end of it. But Pena could very happily play alongside Velasquez or replace Velasquez should Velasquez go. Because if you look at his contract, there is no release clause in it. So that means he is here until 2033, no matter what. Even if he doesn't want to be here, he doesn't have a choice. But that's George Pena. He's a very, very good midfield player. And the player we were referring to, to uh, to cover at left back uh, after Yedder fell left, is this man here, Hector Goreno. Uh, from Mexico, he signed him for eight and a half million from America uh, in the Mexican first division. Uh, and again, he looks a very good player. Nice physical stats there. Nothing worse than a 12. He's got the pick of his mentals being bravery at 16, decisions 15, determination 15, possession in 15, and some nice defensive stats with marking 13, tackling 13. His head is 12. Maybe could do slightly more going forward, but we'll see how we can develop him doing that. But 18 years old, already got a cap from Mexico. He looks very, very good indeed. I'm very happy to have gotten him. Uh, you see he doesn't have a release clause either. I'm trying to make sure and sign these players without release clauses because that's kind of messed me up a little bit uh, with some of our signings in the past. If we think of Louis Fernando Benilla who left for 19 million, which is very sad. Uh, but yeah, looking very, very good. And if Calafiore leaves, and remember Calafiore has a release clause in his contract of about 16, 17 million pounds. If he does go, then Goreno, I'd be very happy for him to be our first choice left back aged 18 years of age. So that's all the chances in and out. That's how the results looked from the games you've missed, what the league table looks like. Let's get into this game against Hearts in the Scottish Cup. And we'll start just by talking about the players who aren't going to be playing today. Uh, Cronetta is out injured, unfortunately. Miranda doesn't have a lot of fitness either. I don't even know if you remember Miranda. He was a striker last year, but he's kind of taking quite a back seat recently. Uh, Musialowski is injured as well. Tomas is on international duty. Maza is a little bit injured. Egan Riley's struggling for fitness, as is Darren Anderson. So this is the team we're going to go with. Morris in goal, as always. Milosevic is going to partner Chara at centre-back today. At the right-hand side, we're going to have Magalanes on the left, Calafiore. Uh, Garino sits on the bench uh, to start today. Might get his debut, never know. Pena will partner Velasquez in midfield. That's a very dominant central midfield partnership for us. Velasquez moves to that box-to-box -box role and Pena as the playmaker. Jovic just in front of them. Galachi is filling on the right-hand side because Lambert's moved to play up front because of the injuries to our strikers. And Booker plays on the left-hand side. The bench has got Jamie McGowan on it, who's their young keeper who's sat who's come up from our kind of under 21s and this seems to be our backup keeper, especially seeing as he, he classes as homegrown as well, which helps for, for the registration purposes. Goreno, Louis Sibley, Vlalic, Stacey, Hamill and Christie. You can see we don't have a recognised striker on the bench, so if anything does happen to Lambert, Christie will have to come on just because of injuries and fitness and stuff. We could play with De La Rosa, and actually, I think we probably should. Let's let's find a place for him on the bench. Uh, I think we'll take off Louis Sibley and bring De La Rosa onto the bench, and that gives us an attacking option on the bench. Look at that, on the fly, and I like sorting this so they're in position order, because I'm a little bit OCD like that. Uh, but yeah, De La Rosa on the bench. On the fly, you saw my decision-making processes there. Let's get into this game against Hearts. And the team step out here, but at Tynecastle for this game, and hopefully we can dominate it. Hearts playing 4 for 2 and remember, Ross Forrest is playing up front for Hearts, and he was signed from us 
uh, at the start of the season. Didn't do well against us in the first game of the season, but we'll see how he does against us today in a kind of revenge game. And Pena has the ball here on the edge of the box. Plays it out toward Calafiori, but it's intercepted. And Forrest comes away with the ball. Velasquez and Calafiori tracking him. Ryan North with it. Plays it in field, it looks like. Yes, it is. Indeed to Burgess. And Burgess plays it forward, but Magalan is intercepts. And Galachi collects it. And can we come away with this ball? Pena all the way back to Morris. And we recycle this play. Booker heads it into Velasquez and Calafiori. Calafiori, 40 minutes into this game, is already on a yellow ball. Played forward toward Lamba. And Lamba heads off the post. And it brings off the keeper and back off Lamba. Oh, that was a bit crazy. But in the end, it goes out for a goal kick. Yes, yeah, somehow Calafiori, after 11 minutes, already on the yellow card. Need to watch that. Maybe Goreno will get on the field if Calafiori uh, uh, keeps throwing challenges uh, in there. Forrest with the ball now for Hearts. Out wide here toward Millwood. And what a finish from Jordan Millwood. Deserving of putting Hearts ahead. Forrest, uh, sorry, Forrest found out uh, the ball out to Millwood there. I can struggle to say words after that, that goal. Um, Morris was beaten at his near post, but I can't complain because Millward has absolutely rattled that into the top corner. And Hearts are up 1-0. So throwing in the right-hand side for Hearts here. They've kind of dominated just a little bit in this game so far, but galachi has got the ball, and it's now a two-on-three situation, and Lambert's got the ball, and can he finish it? No, Whiteman saves it, but Lambert gets the rebound. It's 13th goal of the season for Edward Lambert, a record signing, remember. Could go up to £60 million for that player with add-ons, but Galaccio received the ball from Calafiori, drags the man over, Lambert gets in behind the other man, he hits it, it's saved by Whiteman, but only to the edge of the six-yard box, and Lambert puts that into the open goal, and it's one all here, just short of half an hour plate, and it's thrown in by Hearts on the left-hand side, toward Millward and Barlow, and they're going to switch this play over toward Burgess, they are indeed, and back to Flatman, the ball played forward, and Calafiori intercepts, and Bukert finds Jovic, Jovic dropping deep, but finding Booker down the left hand side. Can Booker chip the keeper? Oh, he's hit it off the bar. What an effort from Roman Booker there. I thought he was going to thrash it across goal, but he dinked the keeper and it just bounced off the bar. And we've thrown the ball in there and Pena has it into Jovic and Magalanes. And back to Pena, over to Jovic. Jovic switches the play to Booker. And Booker drives in field and will he hit this ball? He will, but it's saved by Whiteman. And it's still one all here. And we've reached half time and it's still one. You can see it's been a very even game according to the statistics over there. Booker just missing with that dink over the keeper there as we reached half time. Oh, that could have been an absolutely outstanding goal, but unfortunately it was not to be. And, and Hearts have got the ball on the left-hand side here. Scarlet with it into Connell. The ball across the middle has bounced about. It's saved, but Ross Forrest tucks it away against his former team. His 15th goal of the season now. He's playing well for Hearts this year. Didn't play particularly well for Kelly when he was at Kelly. But Connell here put the ball over. It bounced off Chara. They strike it toward goal. Morris saves it, but only as far as Forrest. And Forrest puts Hearts 2-1 up. And it's a goal kick for us here. Morris finds Milosevic and goes out to Magalanes. And can we go up the line here? Into Pena, forward to Galachi. And Magalanes overlaps if they can find him. But Pena plays it to Jovic. And Jovic drives in field toward Velasquez now. Velasquez with it, back to Pena. Over to Magalanes. And can he get down the line? He tries. He'll play it back, though. Over to Velasquez. And over to Pena, who's the extra man. Jovic with it. Finds Galachi. Can Galachi finish? He can indeed. What a cracking finish from Ivo Galachi there. And it's two all just after an hour. A thrashing effort with his left foot after driving in field. And we're back to two all. As I say, Pena with the ball into Jovic. Some nice passing play. Jovic threads it through. Galachi takes one touch. And just inside the 18-yard box, thrashes that with his strong left foot. And it's two all now. We've changed the left-hand side. Goreno and Christie uh, coming on for Calafiori and for Bukert there. And there's just five minutes to go. And we've got a chance now. Magalanes throws it toward Galachi and back to Magalanes. And are they going to change this to the left-hand side to see our new players? Galachi with it. Jovic finds Goreno. He on his command at debut, drives into the box, swings it in, and Lambert scores a goal, and Goreno gets an assist on his debut. Not even his full debut, just coming off the bench. He gets the assist after he was trans tra transversing. That's not how we say words, is it? After he was he sauntering forward, he drives into the box, and he threads it across, and Lambert gets away from his man and puts it into the corner of the goal, and we're up 3-2 now with five minutes to go. And Gerson Velasquez 
has got a bit of an injury. There's a highlight straight after the goal here, which is not good, but we'll take off Velasquez and bring on Daniel Stacey for him here for the last five minutes, just in case that injury is bad. But there is a highlight straight from kickoff, as we say. Hearts with it, but it's intercepted. Jovic brings it, finds Lambert. Will Lambert hit this well? He will, and Mike when tips it around the post. It's still 3-2. Velasquez will come off now, and Stacey will come on for him for the last five minutes. But it looks like we could be going through here, but there's five minutes out of time that's ticking away here with no highlights and we are through a bit of a scare against Hearts we could have went out of the Scottish Cup at the fourth round stage but no a lovely 3-2 win in the end two goals for Lambert and one for Gulacci a nice debut performance from Guerrero after coming off the bench after about an hour and that's a very nice game indeed 3-2 through to the next round we will see you for the Celtic game in the Scottish Premiership I may have lied about coming back for the Celtic game immediately because Calafiore has just, uh, just so, someone's just met his, his release clause. Uh, HB China Fortune. There we go. HB China Fortune uh, have, have made the offer of £19.75 million, which was matching his release clause, apparently. So Calafiore could be a way out the door, which means Guerrero is going to have to be our left back. We'll see how he does. He's on £42,000 a week, so he's one of our highest earners. But if he does go, it will be unfortunate, but we have enjoyed having him here. And But if we get 20 million for him, that's no problem at all. We did sign him for 16, so it's not a huge profit. But, you know, we were only going to get him by putting that release clause in the contract. And if that is the case, then that is the case. And we'll see what happens for him there. Today is also the day of the fifth round draw for the Scottish Cup. And we can have a look at that just now as well. We'll draw all teams. We'll see who we get. We are away to Hibs. Not Rangers or Celtic who do play each other in this round, which is good. We avoid one of the old firm teams, but we do play Hibs, which is another tough game from a Premiership side. There's lots of Championship sides and League One sides still available. There's even League Two Sterling, possibly, if they beat our both. But another Premiership side, one that we'd like to win, though, still. We'd like to win the Scottish Cup and, and the League, ideally, this year. That would be nice. Maybe the battle on both fronts is a bit hard, especially if we're still in Europe, which we are. But Hibs is, is easier than it could have been, but tougher than it could have been. We'll n now we'll see you for the Celtic game. Maybe. Um, yeah. Turns out I did lie about it being the Celtic game next because I forgot that this was coming through. Well, I forgot to tell you anyway. We've signed Eddie Nketiah from Arsenal for £14 million. This tells you how far in the future we are. He's 29 years old. Certainly in real life, he's not 29 years old. But he's 29 in the game at the moment. £14 million. He, he was transfer listed at Arsenal for that. Looks a very good player. I'll just get into stats in two seconds. But look, they, they claim he's a four-star player. And really, he's acted as a replacement for Alan Graham. Alan Graham, who left for, remember, 40 million. We've signed Eddie Nketiah for 14. And if you look at his stats, physically, he's very, very good. Some very good pace there. Composure off the ball. Teamwork, you know, there's a lot of good stats there. Nice at leadership and positioning we can get around. In terms of his technical stats, dribbling 14, finishing 15, first touch 14, heading 13 can maybe be slightly better, and maybe he's not great at passing or technique. But as a backup striker, for, I know it says he's an important player, but don't believe that. Cronetta's still going to be a first choice striker. But as a backup striker, I think Eddie and Ketia is a cracking option for us there to come off the bench late in the game with that pace to get in behind the line. Yeah, I think he could be a good option, especially for 14 million pounds which sounds a lot of money for Kilmarnock at the moment, but in 2029, it's not actually that much for us, especially since we made 40 from Alan Graham. And we've put, what, about a third of that towards Eddie and Ketia here. I think it's going to be a good signing. You might get to see him in the Celtic game, you never know. So here we are for the Celtic game now. Yeah, I promise you we'd get there at some point. And uh, we've made just a one change for this game. We're still going to go Morrison, go Milosevic and Chara at the back. Magalhães on the right, Calafiori on the left for what could be his last game. You never know. Uh, Pena alongside Velasquez, even though Velasquez has suffered an injury in the last game, he's, he's still just about okay. Past his fitness test, just. Uh, Jovic at attacking midfield. Lambert will move back to the right-hand side because Granetta's come back, says he can only play for 75 minutes, so we might see some Eddie Nketiah who's sat on the bench for today's game and Booker on the left-hand side, obviously. Yeah, it could be a chance of seeing Nketiah uh, come off the bench if Granetta needs the rest, but I think this is just about our strongest team. Maybe Darren Anderson instead of Chara at the back, but Chara's been playing okay for us uh, recently, so he gets to keep his place. But yeah. Let's get into this game against Celtic and what is a top of the table class at the moment. And if we win it, we could go seven points clear at the top of the table uh, ahead of Celtic playing the same number of games. A big, big game here at the top of the league. 
and the teams that are out there. Celtic playing a 4-2-3-1 and the first highlight of the game here goes to Bello on the left-hand side for Celtic. Four minutes into this game, short tire with it into Dalton and Pena clears it away but Lind collects it back to Asamoa and what's going to happen here? They go back down their left-hand side there but it's cleared away. This is just repeating itself here and Asamoa with it. Lambert intercepts. Jovic with it now. Can he thread through Lambert? He can. Lambert on the right-hand side. He's through on goal. He's getting challenged. Is that a penalty kick? It is a penalty kick and Roman Booker is going to take the penalty kick for us here. Five minutes into this game, Lambert drove forward, got challenged, was fouled and Booker has a penalty and he scores after five minutes. Kilmarnock up 1-0 here. Booker with his 16th goal of the season. He's doing not too bad on penalty for someone whose penalties are only about 11 or something like that. But we are up 1-0. You see the highlight here. I'm not quite right in that bottom corner. A bit close to the bottom corner. The keeper just kind of falls over. Doesn't make a great attempt to save it. And we're up 1-0. But a throw in for Celtic here. This could be their highlight. Effectively, that's a hard word to say. It comes in field and that, that bounced off the post somehow. I'm not quite sure what happened. Bello hits it off our player and it goes out for a throw. I tell you, this has been an exciting first few minutes. And Milosevic with a free kick in her own half here. Finds Pena. Out to Magalanes and Lambert and Jovic. Back to Pena and Magalanes. Some nice, slow, patient build up here for us. Finds Velasquez, who switches the ball toward Booker, but Gerardo intercepts. And Effa Kelly plays the ball forward towards O'Day. Milosevic is tracing him, tracking him on that right hand side of Celtic. Challenges. Looked like he got the ball, but the referee says it's a penalty. But it was almost certainly the ball when you look at it there. But now Celtic have got a penalty and Turnbull comes up to take this. He hits it and it's, he sends the keeper the wrong way. And it's one all after a penalty each. See, Turnbull here sends the keeper the wrong way. And it's one all. And it's this thing with football manager this year. To be fair, it was the same for our penalty. It didn't look like a penalty. It looked like he got the ball. But it still was counted as a foul. It's the only thing about this match engine which really, really annoys me, I must say, uh, in this year's game. It was... A uh, goal kick from us that went straight to Celtic and Bellow with it, plays the ball in. It's a great save from Ryan Morris at the near post there and it's out for a Celtic corner. That should have been a goal for Celtic but Morris got down to that at his near post and it's out now for a corner, swinging in away to nothing and it's one all after half an hour. Corner kick from Celtic, Shortar swings it in and it's just over the bar there. I thought it was tipped over but not quite. It's just... Over the bar. We've only had the one shot being the penalty. Magalanes throws it into Lambert though here. Can this be a chance for us? Milosevic with it. He's come forward. He finds Velasquez. And can we get the ball back out wide? We're good attacking in the wide areas. Milosevic finds Lambert and Magalanes. And can he go down the line? He gets challenged by Bello. And now the ball's played forward. But Milosevic intercepts it. And Pena and Magalanes have it. And this is kind of back and forth play but not really a chance coming I don't like the ball being passed about there for us though. it's played for by Chara and Asamoa collects it for Celtic and the ball comes back towards us short tire with it now into P Pasalic there and out wide to Bello and Bello goes down the line he gets challenged but he gets past the challenge he comes in field and it's saved by Morris quite comfortably in the end at the near post and it's still 1-0 we've only had one shot in the whole game not good at all and it's another highlight here I'm going to say yes sure we'll press that boy Gerardo Another highlight here for Celtic. Bellow with it. He cuts in field. He's doing a lot of damage on that left-hand side. It's hit off the post and it's cleared away just about. Booker pumps it upfield. And can we escape to half-time here? Because we have been absolutely dominated. We have indeed. We might need to do something different here because we are getting overrun. So we're going to change to our diamond. Have more players in midfield to hopefully spread out. So we get three kind of sitting in front of the defence. And you know, hopefully Vlalic who's come on for Booker and Velasquez will cover the fullbacks a little bit more. Uh, and up front, give them a wee bit more pressure as well. Put two on those defenders at, at centre-back and see how they get on. Hopefully overrun them in the middle of the park as well. It still leaves us open in the wings, to be honest. All of our formations do if they want to overlap in the wings and stuff. But we'll, we'll see what happens here. I think this could do the job. Uh, but Booker's come off. Um, he scored a penalty, but that's about all he's done. Vlaric comes on for him. So we're going to have the same back four. Pena at defensive mid. Velasquez and Vlalic in midfield. Jovic is in front. And Lambert partner Krenetta up front. Let's see how this second half progresses. We only had one shot, so we literally could not be anywhere. Celtic were just, they were going to score at some point. It was going to happen. So we had to make a change to see if it could make it slightly different. I'm going to demand more from the team when this happens here. Pasalic with the ball. He drives in field. He hits it, and that's very, very wide. Calafiori with the ball on our left-hand side. He throws it towards Pena, but it's intercepted. And if Kelly comes away with the ball, and he drives down the right-hand side. Is he going to hit it? He is indeed. It's saved by Morris. 
but it only goes as far as a day the striker and Celtic go up 2-1 that was not good at all from us they were just able to run past us it was a poor throw from Calafiore to be honest Pena does not track the man back nor does Chara Milosevic doesn't track back all day and when the ball gets saved by Morris it goes straight to a day and no one's there to challenge it and Celtic are up 2-1 it's a throw in on the right hand side for Celtic here. Effa Kelly throws it in toward Pasolic. Pasolic swings the ball to the back post and it's headed away by Magalanes. But Bello gets the ball into Dalton and short has a good save from Morris. And we're going to have to pause this game and make a couple of changes, I think, because of some players who just are not playing well at all. One of them being Jovic. He can come off and we'll bring on Ryan Hamill at attack. And remember, he was he was our attacking man for quite some time until Jovic came and then he kind of lost his place. Kroneta struggling as well. We'll bring on Eddie and Ketia up front and see what happens for this last half an hour. I hope we don't get any sending offs or any injuries because we don't have any more uh, substitutions to make. The ball's thrown in from Effa Kelly toward Tumble. He challenges and Effa Kelly gets the ball again swung toward the back post and we just don't track our men for some reason, and sure tire scores to make it 3-1. This is not a good performance. This is quite embarrassing now. Just the, the quality of our defending is not good enough. You see here, Tumble eventually wins the ball, and Effa Kelly swings that into the back post, and Magalhães just lets sure tire run, and it's 3-1 to Celtic. We still have only had one shot in the whole game, that being the penalty, and now we've finally had our second shot, but if you're, you've only shot for 80 minutes as a penalty kick, you're never going to win a game. And this has been an embarrassing performance from all of us, to be honest. Every single one of the players out on that field, I don't know if my tactics maybe made a, a, a problematic as well by changing it at half time, But nonetheless, that was not good enough. Uh, there's much work to be done before training. And that has mean we've, we've kind of lost our buffer at the top of the table there. You can see now they were just one point ahead of Celtic. But Rangers, should they win all their games in hand, which are against Dundee, Hamilton and Dundee United, so you'd expect they would. If they win all those, they now go ahead of us in the league table by three points, which is a, dis a disappointing way to end this episode. So after that disappointing defeat, I think we'll come back for the Scottish Cup fifth round match. Let's see if we can beat the other side of Edinburgh having beaten Hearts. And we'll also play the game against Aberdeen in the league as well. And this will also act as a wee update if there's any more transfers that happen, whether it be in or out, likely out with some of the the, the, the release clauses in some players' contracts. Uh, so, yeah, so if there's any more transfers, I'll keep you updated there as well. Uh, and then we'll play Hibs and Aberdeen uh, in those two games in the Scottish Cup and in the Scottish Premiership. So if you have enjoyed this episode, maybe you've enjoyed some of our signings or sales or, you know, the £40 million we made on Graham, or if you're looking forward to the next one where we play that Scottish Cup fifth round, please do leave a like on the video. It really does help out. I know you think I just say it, but it really does help me out. It makes me makes me know that you're enjoying what you're watching, which is always good. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And until the next one, we'll see you then.